We're going to have a short plenary on the FH Europe Ambassador Programme and we'll also hear from Neil Johnson from the Global Heart Hub about the Invisible Nations campaign. And at around 3.30 we'll go back into our breakout rooms to talk a little bit about the Ambassador Programme and have an honest conversation about what you've heard and how you feel FH Europe should be taking forward the Ambassador Programme. But first of all, let me welcome Magda to the floor to talk, to talk us through what she has in mind in terms of where we've come from and where we're going with the programme. Magda. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Nicola. Do we have everyone in the room? Fantastic. Can we close the door now because there's a little bit of light? Great. Dear friends, uh, we are a little bit behind time despite our best wishes to be on time. And we have already an external speak speaker joining us uh, from Ireland. So uh, out of respect for him and his uh, ag agenda and calendar, I would like to really move briskly forward. You have just come back from the workshop where we were talking about um, FH pediatric screening, how to convince people. I don't know about the two rooms, uh, uh, but here in the plenary session, uh, in this particular breakout room, what we came up ultimately, the conclusion was we need proper toolkits. We need guidance. We need tools to do this job. Uh, We've known that for quite a while, but it's important for all of us to have this realization and to agree to come to this conclusion, collective conclusion. And I think we've reached this point where everybody recognizes that in order to be effective, we need tools. So the ambassador program is meant to be your, um, our, our uh, set of tools, an alignment on what we as a community should be engaging ourselves with, where our voice, perspective and experience is critical. Is it the political session, section, or other aspects of it as well? And how do we best contribute with our experience and expertise? And uh, it's extremely important that again, we, we as a community understand the expectations from the external stakeholders, the opportunities there are for us to influence to impact for the best future we can build together, but also the gaps, the knowledge and experience gaps that we might, might potentially might need to um, make up for. So without further ado, I will try to move the slides. Fantastic, it has worked. So ladies, the image, uh, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> That's gonna haunt me, I know that. Okay, dear friends, this particular image is a tree with hearts. It represents the fact that our community advocates and works for people with inherited, so running in the family conditions. A lot, but not all of them cause heart issues, cardiovascular disease. But we know from the previous uh, intervention from Jill that we also have other inherited lipid conditions. So I would like us to focus uh, on this image and use it as a sort of a guiding star for us that here we are all about inherited conditions. And that's already first lesson for ambassadors. The ambassadors that we want to build, the pool of ambassadors we want together with you establish are the people who will be advocating on behalf of other people who live with inherited lipid conditions. So our goal, and I will go quickly, is to develop a pool of ambassadors who can both raise awareness and advocate powerfully on behalf of FH Europe network. Let's have an agreement. We are FH Europe. FH Europe is as strong, as big, as powerful and vocal as the people who are within the network. And this particular job of ambassador includes patients in, in, in the national organizations who will be doing this job both 
on an international and national level for all those inherited lipid conditions, FH, HOFH, LPLA, and FCS in different advocacy and education settings. In those slides, there have been some questions, food for thought for you to answer when we send those to you after this event, so you can maybe use them for any thinking uh, back home. Why do we need the ambassador program? I think the best session for me that helped me clarify why we need this program was the workshop just now. We all came to a conclusion that we have certain gaps and we need tools, we need guidance, we need united or unified approach. But let's name some of the gaps and some of the opportunities this program brings. Lack of awareness. Most of the people we deal with don't have a clue about inherited lipid conditions. And it's not just the patients themselves or the people who live with that, but other stakeholders. Very often the conditions we advocate on, on behalf of which we advocate are misunderstood, misinterpreted. There is the prioritization of the case. We know that very often other conditions or other political issues are gaining momentum and we are not as prominent on other people's agendas, politicians, clinicians, and so on and so forth. There's also lack of resources deployed. A lot of us operate on a voluntarily basis. We do not have resources, so we need to generate as many ambassadors as possible to fill in those gaps and do a, a, a hard work of advocacy and support. So as I said, I do appreciate that mostly it is a volunteer-based work. But there are some opportunities, and I'm hoping that I'm not losing you guys. You're not falling asleep just yet, because I'm, I'm seeing some people nodding, but they're swiftly sort of drifting away. So first and foremost, what this meeting has proven so far, and it's been just hours, that we have an opportunity together to build, grow, and strengthen our community. I mean, look at all those exchanges that are happening and discussions and, and, and ideas that we generate. We can achieve joint policy and communication goals. Again, some of those uh, gaps that we had. And policy, when we say policy, it is the screening for FH, the testing for LPLA, the development for uh, treatments for FCS, supporting people with HOFH. We can translate our work, and today was so much a lot, uh, so much about translating the messages on the European level. And how can we translate what happens on the European level into actions on a local, national, regional level? Finally, we can, and probably it's one of the key things that we need to do considering the um, level of um, uh, identification we can reach the people living with the conditions who have not yet been diagnosed and who need our support. So the program, the format, what are we trying to do? We are trying to create, well, we're working already on it and we need you now to be part of it. An educational program, which is structured, and this is a proposal, this is the concept review from, with you together, in seven modules. Each module has a number of sessions. In each session, there is a pre-read. A lot has already been produced. We've been talking all day today, how much guidelines, publications, papers, brochures have been produced. So each of those modules will have the pre-read, which every can can do on demand and their own time. An online session went together with experts, the likes of Sam Gidding, who cannot wait to connect with you guys and with you uh, uh, generate this knowledge. Or, and there are a few other people that still don't know that they will be invited to this program as lecturers. So look out for the invitations. We have so many experts. So. Online sessions, infographics. I heard the word infographics today so many times. We want to develop those and make them available for your use in your language, customized for your needs. And finally, a short self-assessment. Ultimately, we need to make sure and we need to prove to the community that we have made progress. From the starting point, where was our knowledge level, to the point of how have I improved? Do I still have knowledge gaps or do I need to, can I progress to the next session? Finally, um, it is estimated that the program, ambassador program with those seven modules and several sessions would last about 40 hours of your private time. 
which can be then split x amount of hours per week over x amount of months but we need to make sure that together we establish that the program kicks let's say first of january lasts for a quarter we need to make sure that we have your commitment to be part of that ambassadors who want to be part of that learning program will also have an opportunity to connect and reach to experts in different uh, um, topic areas and again, the Sams of this world, the Albert Wigmans of this world, but also Nicola, who is a great source of information. I'm trying to figure out now who shall I look at, Kanika, and, and data uh, who can help us uh, be masters of specific topics. We are already partnering with some of the organizations who are keen to supply us with existing knowledge and expertise when it comes to ambassador and uh, programs and educational materials so obviously there is you because you have already developed some of that uh, upati the european patients uh, academy urordis the rare disease community which has made available their content free of charge and we can build on that there is the european patients forum and their specific uh, uh, content uh, uh, regarding uh, uh, governance, advocacy, the Global Heart Hub, and we will be able to hear from uh, Neil Johnson from Ireland, who will talk about an example of a campaign they're doing, the Invisible Nation. And then we have resources with the scientific committee that FH Europe has built and the policy committee. We are partnering with phenomenal uh, um, knowledge centers like the World Heart Federation, the European Atherosclerosis Society, the Global Registry, we have all of that. Now, the ambassador program bring, brings it all together under one, uh, I wanted to say an example, but it, I'm not sure if it's correct in English, so I will just, under one umbrella, under one denominator. We also have identified people internally within FH Europe who will help us drive this project and will be your go-to person. I'll skip this particular uh, 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 slide, and I just wanted to, he to, to, to reassure you. As a community, when I first came to FH Europe, I felt we were all about supporting each other. As in, we are the patients, we need information on diet, or maybe we need information on the treatment. It was catered to serve a very limited group of people who, in a way, and I say it in all respect, in a way lucky because they already had the diagnosis and they knew what was wrong. But it has, in a way, missed all the people who have not yet been diagnosed. That's, for, that's why we need to shift away from uh, support exclusively to support and advocacy policy to help all the other people who have not yet been identified. Um, this slide was created today. Thank you for helping me redefine the word patient and patient empowerment the term patient has been redefined but it should not define the patient we should not be defined by the term patient and uh sophie thank you so much for uh sharing your perspective because it was really um it helped me look at certain things differently who are the future fh europe ambassadors anyone anyone who wants to be an ambassador has got the time the willingness to act publicly in the, in, on behalf of the community, anyone who speaks English and who's got the time available to do it. Ultimately, the goal is to create a program that is good and sufficient enough to bring it back to the national level and translate it into your local language. But the first layer, the first group of people need to speak English, need to have that interest to act in the interest of public. As you can see, we are bringing new generation of advocates and ambassadors. We want to celebrate the diversity of people, the diversity of cultures, needs, but also your skills and your strengths. Not everyone will be going out there and speaking publicly. Some of you might be actually active in a completely different space. Maybe a clinical trial advisory board, maybe using social media to blog about certain things or maybe someone who wants to help us uh, with the um, design of the new guidelines where we can contribute to the scientific community and help bring our perspective. What will those people do? 
Well, they will speak, they will engage, amplify and represent. Depending on where your strength lies, that's what we want you to do. Now, this particular workshop that we will move to is about constant proof, uh, proof of concept, sorry. Making sure that what we want to do is actually feasible. Making sure that we have an understanding that being an ambassador is learning things around genetics, genomics, health, technical assessment and regulators, clinical trial design, policy and speaking and so on and so forth. The space is vast. We need to make sure that you as well feel that this is what you need. And maybe it's assessing if you want to be an ambassador specifically dedicated to policy or an ambassador in a slightly different space. Now, the modules overview, we will do it in the workshop because I know that Neil is waiting. And I would like to finish with that and make sure that we get an example of an, a campaign that is already running internationally. And then we will break down, uh, break up in the breakout rooms and try to assess if the knowledge that we bring to you and with you is the relevant one. Yes, so um, the technical team, can we now bring um, Neil? If he's still with us. Neil, so lovely to have you. Can you hear me? We cannot hear you. Can you hear me now? We can hear you cloud and cloud, no, cl loud and clear. Excellent. Um, I need somebody to allow me to share a screen if that's okay, Magda. The, the message has been received. Okay, firstly, can I say I'm sorry that I can't be there with you today, but uh, I know my colleague Annie is representing Cree, uh, the Irish member of FH Europe. And while I'm here to talk from the Global Heart Hub point of view, can I just say to you, following on what you've just said there, that uh, you can take it that, that Cree guarantees you a number of ambassadors to your program. Um, and uh, sorry, do you want to say this? Ha this has been well recorded. Okay, good. <laughs> and uh, and just to say to you as well that I've I've said this before in the Irish context, we're way behind many other countries. And one of the initiatives that we've just uh, started is a, a national position paper on CVD in Ireland. And in that, we're actually calling for uh, pediatric screening. So. Um, uh, I wish to assure you that we're, we're fully on board with you there. Um, if I can just share screen now. The floor is yours. Okay, can you see this screen? Can, can you see this? Sharing screen, okay. So Magda, the last time I spoke to you and some of the uh, members of FH Europe, I was talking about uh, Invisible Nation, which is an initiative of the Global Heart Hub. And I know that some people were concerned that, you know, perhaps this isn't relevant to the FH community. Uh, but if you bear with me for a few minutes, I will explain why I believe it, it is an important program and initiative. So Invisible Nation, the concept is about this invisible nation of millions of people around the world uh, who are living with um, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, um, the, the vast majority of whom uh, are undiagnosed and unaware of it. And the numbers are staggering. 85% of all CVD deaths caused by ASCVD. I don't have to repeat all these numbers because everybody in the audience uh, will be familiar with this. But I think what is important is that the Global Heart Hub is an alliance of, of international heart patient organizations. And our focus is on the full spectrum of cardiovascular diseases. But Invisible Nation is a program that focuses specifically on ASCVD because in simple terms, you could almost break out the big family of cardiovascular diseases into two camps, ASCVD and non-ASCVD. And I say that because uh, ASCVD is the predominant cause of all the death and disability from heart, and strike, heart attack and stroke um, relative to um, all other causes of uh, cardiovascular disease, death and um, uh, morbidity. So the Invisible Nation concept was created to expose the realities of ASCVD with the goal of advocating cha change for better health outcomes. Um, individuals with ASCVD are largely unaware that they're at risk of a heart attack or stroke. First evidence that they have it for many people is when they have an event. 
This was a co-created program between the Global Heart Hub and Novartis. And Novartis are the founding partners, but as the program continues, uh, we will be and have started already to engage with other um, partners. It, there is a, a, a dedicated invisiblenation.com website. I can't share this with you now, but there's a video which people can go and, and have a look at on that website. And on the website as well, it's, a, it's effectively a microsite. There's um, a lot of resources that are available in different languages, some infographics and social assets, all explaining what is ASCVD and why we need to do something about it. We launched the initiative in 2021. So we're, we're one year um, into the program and we had very strong visibility across traditional and social challenges at the launch. Um, and this is really just to show you that there's a lot of work to be done and there's a lot of noise uh, to be made. And therefore this program is something that we see running for a considerable period of time. Period of time. I'll just share with you here examples of some of our um, affiliate patient organizations around the world who are participating in the campaign or the program rather. And, you, and, and of course yourselves in FH Europe, Magda were, was very supportive at that launch event. So really today I wanted to talk about what's coming next and how this is relevant to the FH community. So on November 22nd and 23rd, the Global Heart Hub will host its annual um, summit, which uh, this year again will be online. And we invite people to uh, participate and join in on this um, event. And uh, it's the annual occasion when the international community of heart patient organizations come together. Hopefully in the years to come, this will happen in person as opposed to a virtual event. But during this um, event, we're, we're going to launch what we're calling the Global Cholesterol Action Plan. And this to me is where the, um, this, this, the uh, importance of linking with FH Europe is very important. So Invisible Nation is a program that's putting a spotlight on ASCVD. And all of us know that the primary driver of ASCVD, not exclusively, but the primary driver of ASCVD, ASCVD um, is unhealthy uh, cholesterol levels. And therefore, as a separate sort of spin-off activity, the Global Heart Hub will launch an action plan on cholesterol at the summit. And the action plan will specifically um, highlight that the main risk factor for ASCVD, which leads to heart attack and stroke, is elevated LDL cholesterol, uh, which is a, a modifiable risk factor for some. Uh, but for others, elevated LDLC is a, the result of an inherited genetic condition, which of course is uh, what, what everybody in this audience knows. And so we think it's important that in any discussion on cholesterol, we emphasize and perhaps break down some preconceived notions that cholesterol is all about a bad lifestyle or a bad diet. So for that point, it's very clearly calling out inherited dyslipidemias. And the action plan, strangely or coincidentally and ideally, actually mirrors um, what has been highlighted in the recent launch of the, w Heart, the WHF World Heart Federation cholesterol roadmap. And so what the action plan does, it's, it, it has four goals. It's about building alliances at country and regional level, intersectoral alliances, to try and address the urgent need to reduce cholesterol-related ASCVD deaths at risk. It's about raising public awareness. It's about activating the alliances. And it's about improving high cholesterol detection and management. So in simple terms, if you take the landscape as we currently, currently know it, the World Heart Federation have launched a roadmap on cholesterol. The Global Heart Hub have put a, are putting a spotlight on ASCVD. And under that spotlight, there's a bright light about to shine on the advocacy required to drive action 
specifically on cholesterol, which includes inherited dyslipidemias. And we were hoping to do this as a ground up movement. In other words, from the community of patient, patient organizations, carers, those living with or affected by cardiovascular disease, and by creating alliances with other traditional and non-traditional stakeholders, over time, we hope to create a momentum which ultimately will bring about the necessary change that we all know from a policy point of view is required if we're seriously um, going to, if we're serious about, about tackling uh, ASCVD. So I really just wanted to take the opportunity to mention this, to highlight how it is absolutely integrated with the mission of FH Europe. It is uh, consistent with the uh, World Heart Federation roadmap. In fact, uh, Professor Fausto Pinto will be, will be formally launching this. And as I said, it's about the advocacy piece. I, I, I take the personal view that the World Heart Federation has been singularly very successful in producing roadmaps that are clearly evidence-based, produce very powerful information and data, but what's missing on the uh, cardiovascular disease agenda is the actual move to action. And I hope that the Global Heart Hub can play a role, as I said, from the ground up, starting with those living with or affected by the condition, creating alliances, making noise, and bringing about um, active alliances of traditional and non-traditional stakeholders to bring about the necessary change that, that we know um, can make a difference in reducing the burden of um, ASCVD. I'm conscious that you, you, you're against the clock there as well, so I'll, I'll leave it at that and, unless anybody has any, any questions. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Neil, thank you so much for coming in and sharing. And uh, I would definitely invite the group here to comment on this. And I, I wonder how many of you have heard about the Invisible Nation. I know that you are already successfully rolling it out. And those activities we are advo uh, um, advertising uh through our uh newsletter and social media but i just want to make sure how does it sound is this something that you guys hear for the first time is there uh interest to get more information about this campaign and sources of of of, of knowledge that have been compiled inessa you you've got a comment we will we will get you a microphone it's for the people online yeah okay Maybe from Lisbon, do you hear us, Hanil? Hi, I can hear you, yes. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you for your presentation. I think it was uh, very useful and interesting. Regarding this campaign, which is already running, uh, we are aware because we are members of Global Heart Hub, so we try to follow these activities. But what can I say to our colleagues? It's really, even if you do not do it uh, like one-to-one -one in your country, it's very useful because it has uh, very clear and good messages regarding um, uh, this disease and uh, how to prevent and um, diagnose and treat and how it important it is. Therefore, I'm also looking very much uh, forward uh, to this uh, new document you just uh, talked about. And I have a question regarding it. So it would be a paper that could be used like on national levels already, or there is idea or a plan to launch it on I don't know, European Commission or, or such kind of level and to work with it so it is uh, uh, somehow also included in the policies of Europe, uh, healthcare systems and so on. Hi, Ine, it's good to, good to hear you and uh, do really uh, appreciate the support you have, um, have given us uh, to, to this uh, point in the, in the journey. The, the action plan on cholesterol uh, is really, as, as the name suggests, a plan. What we've got to do is to work with all of those, a bit like the ambassador program, all of those patient organizations who sign up to activate the plan. And there are different levels of activation, local, regional, and international. So we're in the very early stages yet. Um, but to answer your question more directly in terms of um, where this can be used, uh, ultimately it's about trying to 
bring the key stakeholders together to bring about the necessary policy changes around particularly the early detection and diagnosis and then of course the treatment um, and and in and, and in many cases that's going to require investment and it's going to require um, a health policy change has this been helpful Inessa has it uh, yeah fantastic um, Neil um, let me ask if there is any other question from anyone in the audience on your behalf you mentioned one thing about uh, tools and documents and using what has been created. I wanted once again to reinforce the message that all of you participating have received your little folder packed with documents, with publications, the World Heart Federation Cholesterol Roadmap is in that pack. And I would like to take this opportunity, just one second. To give you examples of what ambassadors do, what being an ambassador looks like in action. The World Heart Federation white paper that was published a year and a half ago has got stories with our community. There is a poem written by, Ger by Akos from Hungary. There is a story of uh, Cyril from Lebanon who is collaborating with us and raising awareness. There is also the uh, Turkish uh, registry represented here, and we have Meryl who runs the Turkish uh, 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 registry. We also have here in this document the Slovenian model of screening. Ladies and gentlemen, it's also down to us to proactively go out and take those tools that exist and try to find messages that we can already leverage on a national level. So this is one, and I wanted to say, Jungshu, thank you for bringing it from Geneva. Uh, please help yourself, have a look at this. It's here at the stage. In your pack, you have the cholesterol roadmap that Professor Fausto Pinto was referring to, which was published only a few uh, weeks ago in uh, Rio de Janeiro, where FH Europe has contributed, reviewed it, and it talks about uh, opportunities, roadblocks, and uh, uh, ideas how to make prevention and specifically FH screening possible in your countries. Another element of ambassadors and what ambassadors do is delivering a high-level political meeting that took place, for example, in this case in Prague, led by patients community with patients speaking with patients advocating this small format is document that is also published in open access and as an activity an ambassador activity together with diagnosa fh and with christina we have a call to action to actually already uh, 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 take it a step further and issue an official letter that then can be signed under the Czech presidency and sent to every single Ministry of Health across European Union, because that's the, the, the remit. But I just wanted to say, we need to recognize what is happening in our community. We have an opportunity to take all this work to the highest possible level with the European presidency, signature of the minister, and send it from his office to the ministers of health of your countries. So th those things are happening. And, and again, whatever we can leverage, Neil, from the Invisible Nation, from the cholesterol uh, uh, and the ACVD documents that will be published and that we are endorsing, let's use that. With that, we have now half an hour uh, left of our time to break into the breakout rooms. And I am scared because I can see people drifting away and we cannot we we still have some work to do so um we will be just like previously breaking out of the rooms as per the color of your heart pink green and blue and talking about 
what do you feel we need to have as part of an ambassador program? What does it, what 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 elements do you need to empower you? How can we build on the first workshop when we were talking about role uh, uh, plays, the, the 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 politicians, the um, uh, 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 advocates? Where do you see yourself engaged as a patient ambassador? In what role? And give us this feedback so we can build on that. Please don't dr drift away just yet. Last half an hour and we come back here and we have a surprise. So now everyone energetically gets up. No excuse. It's super hot, isn't it? It's hot. Yes. It's, it's just because you see people like Hello. 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 Yeah. Hello again. So I see. Hi. <laughs> I must put my video on. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Hello again. Okay. Hi. Um, is there anybody? Uh, Vida. I'm not uh, sure whether. Uh, is there anybody? What? Sorry. Uh, there is get... another. Uh, Vida, Vida from from Lithuania. Ah. Yes, are you there, Vida? Well, maybe it's only with... so only. But it's not responding. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, if, if the lady. Guys, you're still there. But Fantastic. They... Uh, yeah. They are already <laughs> yeah, yeah. organized between themselves. <laughs> Please <laughs> do jot down all the thoughts that you have. Where do you see yourself as ambassadors involved? what mm. areas of being ambassador and it's great because we have janine who's done two types of project she helped develop a, a brochure she was part of a clinical trial advisory board thanos on the other hand was speaking at the senate thanos was also speaking mm -hmm. at a, a scientific uh, a congress anna andrea you have not yet done anything with fh europe so you next so so you do you have any proposals for me? <laughs> That's uh, interesting. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. So I think we are uh, yeah, I think we are on our own again. <laughs> Nobody can hear us. Okay. I'm not so, so sure. <laughs> so when it comes to where where we see ourselves mm -hmm. uh, as ambassadors in uh, what sector should I say we work better? I think that's very personal. Yeah, probably for me it's. Uh, I would like to have a toolkit uh, and a little bit training to to improve. Uh, you know, to be more efficient with uh, my speeches. Okay. okay. So um, oh. can we please agree that we're going to divide? But let's try to swap a little bit the the, the group. So uh, can we do a bit of a mix here, guys? You're staying in your own virtual group. Uh, 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 and the idea will be really to agree 
what are the roles that you see ambassador could be involved in? Anything. Anything from, I think ambassadors have a role to play in clinical trial design. I see a role for ambassadors to do the political aspects and pediatric screening. I actually think ambassadors should be on social media promoting and raising awareness. Or maybe there is something completely different that we haven't even thought of what ambassadors could do and then what is required for them to be involved. Because we have jotted down several modules. Those modules are overarching issues and challenges when it comes to inherited lipid conditions, understanding every disease specifically, understanding the genetics of it, the inherited aspects, the rare disease aspects versus cardiovascular diseases, engagement with HTAs. Who knows what HTA is? HTA, one, two, three, four, five. I would be disappointed if you guys didn't know. <laughs> HTA stands for Health Technical Assessment. It's one of the very, very important stakeholders who makes a decision whether a treatment from statin to PCSK9 is actually accessible, allowed to the market, and whether patients can use it. Then someone else will actually put a cost on it. So if you are a rare disease patient, uh, if you're a rare disease patient, you might want to be involved in the decisions whether this drug is good for us or not, whether this drug is at the right price or not, will my country reimburse it or not? So see yourself as the people who have a role to play along the whole spectrum, and it's a complex one. Let's build on your specific backgrounds. We have doctors, we have industry, we have journalists, we have consultants, we have UPATI fellows, we have young ambassadors, and so on and so forth. So we divide like that. Do we have you with us? Yeah? Okay, you can choose whichever group you want. I and think let's we are jot not down what is it that we want to see in ambassador program. <laughs> think about four conditions, not just your own. Four conditions. You I you always hear Mark FH, talking. FH, FH, FDLA, FCS. I think okay. you wanted to mix this what is this we need? Now, but, uh, Where can yeah. we be involved? What do I want to be involved? Okay. Can I give 40 hours? Do yeah, I have the time? I think they can hear us. Will I be actively using it? Okay. okay. Just go ahead, shall we? The clock starts. We have, we have, 20. We have 20 minutes from now. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, so we, we shall divide here? Okay. Yes. Like this. But okay. we were supposed to mix yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Would you like to mix? Or? Yeah. Well, she mentioned a couple of things so like whether we want to you, uh, be involved but, but in But we don't do any yeah. way, so... We, we don't uh, do I, I have no way. idea yet. <laughs> whether we want to do political advocacy or whether we want to be in clinical study design. So I will be taking notes. Or uh, writing brochures. Is this also an option? Like uh, not being an, an ambassador that has to do with people not from the FH community? but just to ready the material, like uh, writing up a brochure with the right terminology, you know, everything that an ambassador needs to have knowledge of. That's interesting, yes. Well, it was just but, to get to explain it to you. It was an artist brochure on, <clears throat> on a new drug, <clears throat> on NP little a, which you, there is no drug yet, mm -hmm. but they prepare the sort of the, uh, the ground for it. And it's a brochure for, for, for patients and uh, so they they wrote something, and then we were invited to give our comments. That was the sort of thing. Was it this um, one? Um, I was uh, it's only for... a leaflet. Uh, no, it, well, it's from the no, artist. It's from it's from um, uh, what's their company called? They they, they founded a company for um, you know for their new medication. Ah. Uh, so it's a it's a it's a new thing and okay. it's also online. Uh, Magda sent us the link to you can call it up. Uh, it even exists in German as well, by the way. Mm. So if you like, I, I can uh, I can send you a link afterwards. For sure, I yes, think would be interesting. Okay, and I might have it, but I'm not sure. 
what do they think? How long will it take until they can uh, release the medication? Well, the they market? are in, in, the, in, the, in the phase now uh, of testing and uh, I think 20, 23 or 24 is the test phase. And then of course, it has to go through all the, uh, the boards in the various countries, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, 23, 24 should be, the test should be, uh, should be completed. So one of the people who took part is actually in the test program. So we, uh, so that was quite interesting because it's, what do you do when you hear about it? When you hear your diagnosis, where, where can you go? Who you know, where can you get answers yes. to your questions and so on. So it was quite interesting to do that. Um, that was what I've been doing. And the other one was, um, uh, what was it actually? Yes, well, a webinar we did. Well, I think you all did webinars, didn't you? So that that's that sort of presentations of your case, you tell your story and so on. But that's interesting with the brochure. Uh, mm -hmm. with working and so on and currently um, I'm taking part in a in the design of a study so they do a study design um, for a new medication and they want to know what what makes me take part in it you know mm -hmm. why would, would would patients be interested in taking part why wouldn't they so one thing was well if i don't know whether i get the medication or not um so what good is it if i if i take part in the study is that a pro or a con etc so we have all these discussions so mm -hmm. they, they are trying now to design the study so that it's it's interesting so that i get as many um sample people as many people taking part as possible mm -hmm. So, um, and also how much time would you, I mean, if you have to go every three months for a day, would you be prepared to do that? Or would that be a barrier? So just to see what, how patients react, what, what, is, what would they be prepared to, to invest and what not? So that's, that's, that was um, a, a sort of a discussion we had with, uh, with Novartis people. Mm -hmm. Sounds interesting. It's very interesting. Yes, indeed, it is. So uh, if you are interested in that sort of thing, you know, working together with industry on, on particular projects. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> um, we're going to do something sort of similar tomorrow. Uh, it would be a Nomozygous FH advisory board, Ultragenics. Clearly, they're launching a new drug, and they also want uh, some uh, uh, advices, some instructions when it comes to their brochure, so that it's more appealing to other HOFH patients. And then they asked us uh, a few, uh, for a few general questions. We're going to have this kind of discussion, and they want to know a few things about our diagnosis. Uh, about uh, the uh, the problems we have, uh, like every country they have uh, with uh, whether that's uh, some law, the, the, whether the drugs are not a fully reimbursement of uh, or the art stuff like that, and they want to know what barriers uh, each individual have in their countries, so mm -hmm. they are more prepared prepared for that when they launch the actual drugs, and. Uh, it's pretty interesting. It's the first time I'm also doing it. Uh, in any case, I think that we drifted away from the subject again. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but you're I already enjoy. acting as ambassadors. It's only me who, who has not found a role yet. <laughs> That's why we're trying to, 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 so. to, to give you ideas. If you, if you don't fancy um, doing webinars or public um, appearances, then there's a lot of background work. Like the other thing I did, I, I um, corrected the translation. You know, if you correct the translation mm -hmm. of, a, of a survey for women with FH and their babies, you know, when, when you're pregnant, what, what was the advice? Were you taking your, 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 what medication did you take? What did the doctor tell you? What did your family tell mm -hmm. you? And so, so it was a, it was a survey. 
and they needed people to, to, to check the translation. So for instance, for you, it would be German, for, for Anastasius, it would be Greek, just to check to see if the translator has done it properly, has, has understood everything. So there, there are a lot of jobs where you don't have to produce yourself, where you don't have to out yourself, you know. That's also uh, something. I Please. guess that, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that you can uh, start somewhere because all the, the courses we're going to have, the modules, are going to be the same for everyone, right? So I guess... Uh, you also learn yourself by trying things. You could try on one sector, you, you think that uh, it's not working, like in the policy department. Uh, <laughs> and you, for instance, for instance uh, you would see that it won't work for you. So I guess you, you can ask uh, to change it. Uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, they know what they're doing. You know, Magdalena knows how to utilize people. Mm -hmm. The best to their abilities, of course, you have to be also comfortable with that. But uh, at the end of the day, it's voluntary. So, well, I, I think you, as you say, according to our talents, we can choose what we want to do because that would make sense. And for instance, I, I would really love to learn how to how to do a blog, for instance, how to write a blog or. Uh, hmm. or how to um, how to work on social media in general because I think that is a very very potent um, tool you know to reach people mm -hmm. especially younger people perhaps I've got no idea I've, I've never done a blog <laughs> so uh, it used to be popular but I don't think that nowadays many people uh, read blogs that, that's the only problem but then again, there are so many platforms on social media and you can find a way no matter, uh, you know, your background, your age, it doesn't matter. You, you don't need to be a teenager to, to have, uh, you know, ages, to know how to work on TikTok and stuff like that. But of course, it's, uh, you know, it's harder to follow the younger generations. I see now that FH Europe posts on uh, Instagram, you know, on Facebook, uh, on Twitter as well. I, ha I hardly use Facebook. Well, I don't either, personally. But I, I don't know whether it would make sense. Or we have a website. But our website, I'm the one who changes things. Not, nobody else has got time. or uh, So that needs really redoing. So um, Magda once told us that she has uh, courses for videos, you know, how to, how to make a video a short video or something just uh, um, you know just to learn uh, how to produce uh, material to put on your own website because at the moment we don't have a professional web designer that would be the other option of course but uh, still if even if you have a web designer you have to know you have which to videos would you put on your website Janine? Uh, for instance, short stories about, uh, you know, like, like we have in the webinars, like um, people telling about what they're doing, what, what, what they're, the stories, for instance, mm. something like that. But um, yes, uh, it, it, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm uh, just trying to, to find out what, what we could benefit, you know, what our benefit could be, what, we, what they could provide for us so that we can do our work more professionally. But I don't know whether I want to do a blog or as you said, it may it may be a lot of work. <laughs> and nobody will read it. So uh, it's probably not worth it. But uh, yes, it'd be interesting to see what they what they what they can give us. Yeah. I'm I'm a bit uh... Not, I don't know. I have no ideas. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> um, I would like to, to work somewhere in the background. <laughs> yeah. Maybe working uh, how to make a brochure or something like this. That's material. Exactly. Or um, flyers or mm. you know, handout material. We do that when we have events, you know, local events, then we, we produce our own flyers. Uh, we try to, to do little, you know, just folding brochures. Mm -hmm. 
nothing expensive, but but it, it takes some design work, it takes some thought how to and there of course is very good if you have um, if you have material to copy or to translate. Um, what I found very interesting is this um, from um, what was his name Neil um, Neil Johnson, the Invisible Nation. Exactly. Yes. One of the first um, slides he showed, there were all the numbers on it. You know. Yes. Yes. And yes. And, and I, well, I did a, I did a screenshot, and I'm 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 going to 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 steal it from him, uh, asking for the <laughs> copyright not to to use, but use the figures, the numbers, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and translate it, and uh, just you know, steal some ideas from left, right, and center, and <laughs> put it together. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe they can help us with this toolkit. Maybe they could provide some information so that we can make our own leaflets or whatever we need for um, for our own uh, customers. Because we don't personally, well, when I put something out in English, it, it's very difficult. I, I have to, I have to translate everything into German, or and possibly French if, uh, well, because we also would like to to reach out to the. French part of Switzerland. So um, the English um, material, I can't really use it one-to-one -one anyway. So, uh, but I can use the ideas. So I don't know whether in Greece you have um, more English speaking um, people are more familiar with English and you can just use what, what you get from FHU. Generally, I would say uh, Greeks have a good understanding of English. We are on a very good level. But uh, yeah, usually, I mean, it depends on who is reading. Most of the, our younger patients, they don't need the translation. But, uh, you know, mm -hmm. as a, it's a family condition. And uh, some, uh, you know, even the, some members of the association, uh, they don't understand uh, most of the articles I'm sending on what's going on in FH Europe, for instance, because they need it translated. They are on the older mm -hmm. generation. I don't know how is it in FH Austria. Uh, if uh, you need to, if you, you know, your members, even on the other, uh, sorry, in the board, they are uh, speaking English good and uh, keep track of what's going on like internationally or you need uh, you need to translate it no in for the most board, of your members generally speaking the, the members mostly uh 50 50 percent i would say would need a translation mm -hmm. uh yeah depends on the age too yes yes of mm -hmm. course and also on the on the publication of uh, maybe it's difficult language or easy language Mm -hmm. But I would say 50 to 50 percent mm -hmm. would understand English. Mm -hmm. But so, so you do your, you translate it yourself for your uh, customers, for your um, members. You translate the things they don't understand. and If it is necessary, yes. Mm -hmm. A few things here and, here and there it depends on what is important. For instance, uh, we had uh, after uh, the marketplace, the European marketplace, that uh, they uh, showed that they presented the FH pediatric screening. Uh, they had uh, a, a deadline for the ministers of uh, the. Uh, sorry, what? Okay. They cannot hear us. It's, ah, it's okay. okay. It's okay. Uh, we just, are. Uh, we I are just, in a separate okay, room. Okay. <laughs> uh, it just came out of nowhere. I was like, okay. It's. It okay, was okay. such a I, a long. <laughs> yeah, back. it was after uh, my. Well, yes, it was, it's very uh, long ago that you asked. It was very long ago. I was kind of confused. <laughs> anyway, and. Um... So we are in a separate room. <laughs> Yes, yes, okay, okay. Now, now we know for certain, although it appears to be like that. Anyway, and uh, we had, uh, uh, sorry, my brain today doesn't function very well. I'm really, really sleepless the past few days. Uh, anyway, uh, a format like uh, a pre-written um, 
letter to send to the politicians, the members of uh, the Greek the, the health uh, ministry here, sorry, and uh, to persuade them to vote for uh, the FH pediatric screening. Of course, that was in English. I cannot send it in English. Yeah, mm. exactly. Same yes, problem, and it was very short notice. It cost much time to do it. Yes, yeah. I, mm. I'm pretty sure, uh, especially the members of uh, the health ministry, they know to speak English, but uh, still, sometimes it's necessary and it's urgent as well in this time. And you have to translate to be more. And do you know if the they standards. voted for the program? Um, Did you get any feedback? Maybe it's better for uh, Magda or even Stella, I don't know, to, to answer this. Mm -hmm. There's supposed to be a deadline, but uh, I don't have anything official, so... I think Stella, they don't know us. yet. What's that? I think they don't know yet. It was supposed to be on the 5th. Of October. Voting, but uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, it took, uh, you know, few weeks of postponing, but huh. uh, yeah, I don't, uh, I won't talk about it uh, because it's, you know, it's not, nothing official and <sighs> yeah, I, I, I'm not certain of what's going on. Mm. So maybe if Stella can hear us, she can. Mm. Yeah. Ah, so uh, what will I tell them? <laughs> 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 I'm yeah, also anyway. a bit tired. I don't know. It's now in the afternoon. I'm already a bit tired. Mm? Yeah, it yeah. makes sense. We, we had a few hours here. Yeah. I was supposed to be in Lisbon right now. Uh -huh. And why didn't you go there? Because the night before my flights, I went out with some friends they visit from Athens, and we went out for the night and I ate some food, junk food, Greek souvlaki, chicken souvlaki. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I was traveling uh, in uh, the noon, afternoon actually, uh, on, on uh, Friday. And uh, all the night I had stomach aches. I was, uh, you know, sweating left and right on the night. I had nightmares. I wake up with, uh, you know, my stomach was a mess mm -hmm. at dawn. And, uh, I go to the toilet, vomit. Anyway, I, I spent, uh, you know, much time in the bathroom, like, for you. Day. And then I was thinking, okay, maybe, uh, you know, as I was, uh, you know, preparing to, you know, to go to the flight, I was contemplating whether I go or not, because I was feeling bad. Sometimes I would feel better. I felt dehydrated. And, uh, you know, I had uh, to go to the London, that was three hours flight, then uh, four hours layover, and then another three hours, I think, to Lisbon, absolutely. in order for me to be there at uh, almost midnight in the hotel, and then I had to wake up on Saturday early, and I, I couldn't think I'd make it, mm. and uh, I made the right decision, because yesterday was, even in the evening, I still felt, you know, nausea and head mm. and stuff like that. Mm. So it's, yeah, I have not the best days for me. Yeah. I'm a little bit, even today, I feel uh, weak. Oh dear. Hopefully it will get better soon. Yeah. Yes. It was probably the chicken food like Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm not sure if it's uh, gastroenteritis or, uh, or that. I didn't go to the doctor because it was one day the symptoms. Today I'm feeling better, just weak, you know, sleepless. Mm. But anyway, it wasn't anything, mm. you know, super serious. Well, I'm very glad that that they 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 do it uh, in a hybrid fashion because I'm still not because <laughs> of COVID. You see, I'm I'm still very careful. So uh, I'm very happy to be able to. To take part, it's first time. <laughs> yeah. and how do you like it? Very much. The, uh, okay. very much. It's a very good event, I think. Excellent. And, and it's it's a pity that we cannot be there, but on the other hand, it is good that we can meet online and participate. Exactly. No, yeah. I, I think that's that's very good. Mm. 
just you you get a feeling and uh, yes maybe next year I mean, yeah hopefully uh, and why didn't you go me guys uh, both of you remind can you remind me again did you say uh, me because it's it's too much time i was away last week uh, for more than a week and now traveling again i cannot do everything i must uh, economize my time and so it's not possible it would mm. be too much to, next week i must go to see my mother and then i will be away again and yeah i must do also my work so for me it was the best solution to stay here but i'm lucky that uh, lena rosa went there and her father and Caroline Kastowski. So mm -hmm. Aust FH Austria has three representatives. Oh, very good that's true, yes. Yeah, that's how, great. How many more could we have, yeah. to be honest, yes. Yeah, and Lena is very sad that you are not there, Danos. She, uh, she was looking uh, forward to seeing you there. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I haven't seen her in a while. How is yeah. she doing, by the way? I oh, she is. She's but, doing well. Maybe you asked afterwards in the I plenum, will, will. in the plenum, and 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 they they show show them to us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know. Okay. Yes. It's uh, well. I will send her on Facebook after the, the meeting the event and uh, to check how she's doing. But we haven't talked in a while, like in a long time, to be honest. I think it was the second quarantine, the last time we talked. So yeah, yeah, it's been it's been a hard time, hasn't it? Yes, it's getting yes. better. We are so used right now to to this kind of meetings. Yes, yeah, right. Because everything happened in person before. I mean, in Greece, it wasn't too. Uh, popular to have uh, hybrid events like that, and uh, now it feels it's good, of course, because otherwise I wouldn't I couldn't attend like you. But it's kind of weird to think about it. Yeah. Well. Yeah. And you, Janine? Well, it was, it's because of COVID. I okay. I have to be very careful because I've got a multi multi chronical disease uh, problem so uh, I, I just uh, have to be extremely careful and okay. uh, I go to meetings now wearing a mask uh, but traveling on an airplane etc um, I'm not particularly uh, keen on that and that's why having the opportunity to to be there without being there so being there virtually uh, I thought that was a great opportunity and uh, so uh, yeah. <laughs> nice. You gotta do what you gotta do, of course. Yeah. Well, and next time. Next you know time, maybe somewhere where closer. Next year. Where will I be next year? I have no idea. They will you tell us be... tomorrow, I think. Okay. <laughs> they announce it in the end of each uh, meeting. Yeah. Where it's gonna be the next one? I think. Mm. Yes. Perhaps in Switzerland. So you. Uh, <laughs> But who will organize it? Yes, we'll see. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe it was maybe it would be impractical for some people now that I'm thinking because you need password, right? So um, yeah, I yeah. We might I did not get where did you say it, Danos? Switzerland. Yes, it's Schengen. Yeah, it would be kind of impractical to organize it there, right? Because what? of the passport. No, it's Schengen. No, oh, it's yeah, it's right. Out of it, 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 Only the yes. British people have problems. <laughs> yeah, right. Yes, no, but it, correct, correct. EU is fine. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, the British have a problem now. Uh, or we Only have a the problem British. going there. We need a passport to go to Great Britain now. Mm. Yes, true, true. For some reason, I thought uh, that you have problems in Switzerland as well. But it's no, Schengen, we, are so, yeah. we are not EU, but we are part of Schengen. So that's not a problem. Mm. That's true. <laughs> so no excuse, you mean? Should, no we, excuse, should, we, yes. should we volunteer to do it? Or should I volunteer? <laughs> I, I don't know. Usually... Uh, I don't think... <laughs> I, I've even got difficulties to organize our own um, general meeting because it's still due. So uh, that's still on my plate. Do you have it this year still? Well, we, we, yeah, yeah, we have to have it every year. 
you know, mm-hmm. because of the uh, statutes. So mm-hmm. you know, have a meeting every year. But um, we've just decided to do it via Zoom again. Just yeah. mm-hmm. to make it easier. We had to postpone it also. We uh, would have had it yesterday. But uh, two of my uh, board colleagues are away for rehab or such. And so we had to postpone it and we have to make it in December. So we said, no, we make it online only. Yeah, It's easier mm-hmm. and uh, safe for everybody. Yeah, and you get more attendance. You get more people. I mean, we, we, we found that we get more people online than if they have to travel. Yeah, but if you make it a hybrid uh, uh yeah. Uh, format it's okay mm-hmm. last year we had a hybrid format mm-hmm. but you have to have a person who does it with mm-hmm. all the uh, technical equipment and uh, this year it would not be possible mm-hmm. yeah, so sure. we said let's make it online and as you say maybe more people will attend mm-hmm. it's easier for people to attend and it's cheaper to actually organize of course so why not? Mm. Mm. You have to do it before the year end, though, or is it like uh, suggested but not obligatory? It's uh, obligatory every year. Mm-hmm. No, no. I, I mean, uh, do you need to do it before the year end? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, before the, yeah, it yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, what are we going to tell um, Magda in a minute? <laughs> I will I tell her. Idea. I will work in the background, correct yeah. or reread uh, translations from English into German. Okay. <laughs> and if she has other proposals, I will prepare to, to take over also. Very good. That's good. <laughs> will you tell her? Well, you <laughs> or, tell or her. I, I, I've spoken. <laughs> No, you can you can tell me that. Yeah, mm. that's very good. And uh, so, yes. Uh, what 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 would you do then? You carry on as a speaker and as a moderator, Anastasius. Uh, me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sure, but in this case, I think it's more personal than. Uh, uh, how do I say this? Generalized, because it's uh, for each individual who, who are, you know, it's like she asking what, uh, how are we going to be involved? How would you like to be yeah, involved? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I would say and that you, you would like to work uh, on translations. And uh, what uh, do you say you want to, to do, Janine, again? Also work on brochures or uh, blogs or stuff like that. I could transfer it to Magda, but. but... Yeah, well, there was this the clinical study design. Mm. and writing brochures or contributing to writing brochures, mm. things like okay. that. Oh, yeah. That would also be interesting. Mm. Mm. Contributing in writing brochures. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure about what I want to do either. I mean, okay, I could go on with uh, making uh, present making presentations on webinars, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I don't mind, but uh, having this conversation, I'm actually thinking: uh, is the ambassador training going to be uh, covering parts a little bit of this and a little bit of that, or it's going to be more special uh, specialized, focused on what we need? Because obviously. Uh, you need a diff- different training if you, you are uh, making speeches or uh, maybe meetings with politicians, with decision makers, and different kind of training if you, you are more on the uh, written kind of communication, mm-hmm. like working on brochures, forming a letter, an official letter, uh, yeah. stuff like that. I'm just, I was just wondering how the training is going to be. It's going to be a generalized or focused. But there's seven lessons. I imagine every lesson is a is perhaps a, a, a different aspect. And then you choose what you want to do in the end. I don't know, 40 hours training. And then you say, well, this is what, you, what I'd like to do. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to ask her, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's going to be, yes. Mm. 
And I think that they finished as well. Everybody's up. Yeah, they are already moving. <laughs> are you going to have coffee now without us? Or... <laughs> no, Why I... is there a coffee break? Yeah. No, I, I think there will be a surprise now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, a God. surprise. Yeah. Okay. What is going to be? Mm -hmm. You're it's very curious. <laughs> it's going to affect more of those in real life than us here online. Probably. I think they must have a wonderful time at Lisbon. Yes, they have a good Where is everybody going? Oh, they are going on the terrace without, without us. So they talked and talked and decided what everybody's going to do in the next year. They and... forgot us in the virtual room. <laughs> the online team has rights. Oh, God. No, they're back. Can we? Can they hear me, guys? Have you? For, we have forgotten you. We went for a break. Yes, yes. we made, We saw oh, it. That you oh, so oh, what, what, what is the conclusion? <laughs> you always have to join in person. <laughs> yes, yes, that's probably that's probably. So, guys, what's going to happen is um, we had to change slightly the agenda overall, and the debriefing overall will happen tomorrow. In one of the break, uh, in one of the sessions. So, what I would like to do, maybe, if it's not too much to ask, for the three of you to jot down in one document some of your conclusions, and I will give them to Annie, who is the rapporteur. Okay. Conclusions Sounds is like good. <laughs> yeah. Although I, I wouldn't say that our whole ideas could sum up uh, just in just one document, you know. <laughs> no, I mean we didn't really, we didn't really talk that much to be caught in a document but we will do that we will do that we will but it's, it's it's amazing you haven't abandoned the meeting yet you're still here it's so incredible thank you we we're supposed to go we were break. watching everybody uh leaving the room <laughs> and we're yeah. wondering where the coffee is <laughs> it's, all, it's all right it's all right guys uh, i don't know if you're going to be able to see that but there's going to be a little surprise uh so i think five minutes ten minutes Five ten okay. minutes. Yeah. Did I get yes. that right? You want a document from us with our with our thoughts? Is well, document. Right? It would be great to have something via email or something. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Okay. 